After portraying Emily for two seasons now, I'd say one of the biggest things she has taught me is confidence and fearlessness and fierceness. Being unapologetically yourself and not being ashamed of what it is that makes you happy, whether it's a certain person or a certain activity um, or hobby, whatever it is, uh, she is very much unapologetically herself. Hey, it's Haley Steinfeld, and these are the top five ways Emily Dickinson was away ahead of her time. Five, First one, I would say, well, like all of us in a pandemic, um, Emily has found countless ways to stay creative and access the entire world from her bedroom. And funny enough, looking back on now season one and two, uh, and having shot season two, thankfully and luckily before anything had happened, we were able to complete filming the season. Um, looking back on it and realizing that it's almost, it's wild to think that it's almost like I prepped myself for quarantine by playing Emily Dickinson. She refused to get married um, and instead had a lifelong, very complicated uh, queer romance with her very own sister-in-law, as you do. My favorite part about the relationship between Emily and Sue. I smile because I, I don't have just one. I think ultimately this is a relationship about true love and, and being seen and feeling understood in a world of miscommunication and confusion and standards and all of these preconceived notions of what you should be or again, what a woman should dress like or, or how she should act. Sue is somebody to Emily that simply loves her for who she is, as crazy as she can be, as silly and, and weird and obnoxious and whatever, emotional, how, she, she loves her at the end of the day. And with that comes so many amazing things that Ella and I get to do throughout both seasons of this show, uh, as far as making these discoveries between these two incredible characters and um, watching them fall in love, out of love, back in love, uh, and everything in between. Emily wrote poems that would work so well as tweets. You know, just, I, I, I love to think that her Twitter would just be like, popping. Fame is a fickle food. I'd retweet it. I'd even favorite it. Might even quote tweet it with a couple question marks because I wouldn't know what it meant exactly, but I'd be interested. I might even screenshot it. There's so many. Fame is a bee. Like, what a tweet. So I think it's safe to say that Emily Dickinson invented cottagecore, which um, for those of you who don't know, what that is. It's an internet aesthetic, a subculture, if you will, or like Tumblr, basically. I mean, it's that sort of, you know, woodsy, ethereal, beautiful, flo floral kind of nature. Google it, it'll make more sense. Or just read Emily's poems. <laughs> and finally, Emily Dickinson would never conform to a certain behavior, to anything, really. She is a writer. She can probably call herself a writer, especially with where we pick her up in season two. She has won that right. And she refuses to just be what everybody in that time felt that she needed to be or was supposed to be. And that was a woman in the kitchen. Um, she, she didn't want to cook and clean. She wanted to write. She wanted to go to the circus. She wanted to live a wild life of just freedom and creativity. And that's exactly what she does. Although a lot of it took place from her room, she still somehow created that for herself. Um, and uh, she broke down the walls eventually and, and got to that circus for sure.